Hey guys, Sarkat here. I want to make a quick video about the developer Q&A. Um, a lot of people have been making videos talking about whether they agree with the Q&A, whether they disagree with the Q&A. There's been loads of uh, Reddit drama, as there always is Reddit drama. However, that's not really that helpful for anyone. I think the main thing which we can take from this developer Q&A is Q&As are fundamentally a flawed system in their current state. Uh, the reason why I feel confident in saying that is someone who hosts... Uh, podcast with Path of Exile has done for uh, over a year now and has interviewed lead developers multiple times, I've kind of like got an idea of what does and doesn't sort of work in this kind of field. So for context, this current developer Q&A part one, because there are multiple parts of this, um, is like really, 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 really long. Now I'm not amazing at counting, but I counted 58 questions. Now just for context, so you can see how long this like document is here. Let's compare this to the length of the Google Doc, uh, which was the prepared questions we had on the last Chris Wilson, lead developer of GGG, interview we had on Bay Class. Four pages, pretty well spaced out, big text. Much less than this. Now, this is also mostly just like questions. Uh, this is questions and answers. But keep in mind that this is like the kind of document we have prepared for a two to three hour podcast answering things in depth. I don't think that you can realistically have a 58 question long QA and have satisfying answers because you can't answer some really hot topics in just like one or two lines. We have some massive topics in here, talk about like the state of trade going forward, um, league design, power creep, so on and so forth. You can't boil down such a massive question into such a tiny little answer. This isn't a problem unique to GGG. Um, a game I follow very closely is World of Warcraft. And World of Warcraft's been quite famously doing Q&As um, since Legion, very regularly on their YouTube. Um, and the feedback is always like, it's great, Ian, you've given us an answer, but this is mostly waffle, you're dodging the hard questions, so on and so forth. Even if lead def devs really want to take the time to answer questions, it's impossible to craft a satisfying answer, which doesn't seem like whiffy PR, in two lines. The way that I would do uh, developer Q&As going forward is do more podcasts, uh, do more uh, videos, or if you want to stick to this written format, cut it the hell down. So these are just some like basic notes that I prepared. So from these 58 questions, this should be multiple Q&As if they want to keep this current format. By having shorter Q&As, they're more focused, the information is more digestible, and it gives you time to um, write more in-depth, succinct answers. Um, this document is so long that when I initially reviewed it on stream, I recorded a one-hour video, and once I finished the video, I forgot what half of the questions were because there's so much bloat. So the way that I would cut this up is I would have one um, document, which is purely synthesis and the league design. That way you can have a very tight, very tailored Q&A um, with the same kind of format, but more extensive answers. And it's all like, okay, what did we learn from synthesis? What are we going to put into future leagues? There are some questions about future leagues in there. And that we have a tight, succinct thing. It makes sense. You can digest it. You can register it. You can reflect on what the community has to say. And that way... Um, GG can take community feedback in a much more structured approach because they like doing this. GGG likes listening. They listen to everything that's out there. They don't follow it, but they take the information in. There's so much like feedback for such a broad document. It's actually very hard to digest that feedback. So not only would a more tailored document um, be more enjoyable for the reader, but it would also be easier for the people whose job it is who are hired by GGG to process community feedback. So it's easier for them as well. Right, next one, console. Um, there's a bunch of really important Xbox and PlayStation things, which are like shoved down right at the very bottom. And there's a bunch of like stupid fluff questions. I was ready to ditch this like halfway through because it seems like we just got into the pointless fluff questions. Then we got really hard hitting console questions. That should be its own separate thing. If I'm someone who only plays Xbox or only plays PoE and I want to know about these quality of life changes which are like make or break for the system, that's important. I want to read that straight away. I don't have to go through all of this waffle. So having a dedicated console one would be huge for the console audiences and then it can be easily promoted and shared, you know, this, that and the other. Trade. Trade is a very big topic. A very big topic. They've done um, dedicated just trade manifestos before. 
if you're going to talk about trade, you need to really talk about trade. You can't just have a throwaway line in the middle of everything else. That should 100% be its own entire thing if you even want to address it. Um, then finally, um, a current affairs. So there's a bunch of random questions in here which are just kind of like responding to what Reddit is currently talking about. So um, the beat race flashback, so on and so forth. Again, current affairs are important to address and register, but they're only important when they're current. No one's that interested in them two, three, four months from now. So by them being their own document, it means that if I want to digest it now, I can go to that document, I have it now. And then if I'm making a video in the future, I'm a console player in the future, and I'm trying to share stuff, I can easily share the appropriate things which are important long term and ignore the waffle because the current affairs now won't be important two, three, four, six months from now. Anything which doesn't fit into these four sections should be cut or saved and bundled for a future Q&A. Because they've said Q&A part one, that heavily implies they're working on a part two, which is why I think this kind of feedback is kind of important because if you're going to uh, take the time to write this off, and this takes a lot of time um, to do, then please do it in a manner which is better for us and better for you, and then we can all just kind of like flourish going forward. I do think it's really good that Gigi is taking the time to answer community questions. Um, but I think unless the way in which it's um, answering these questions is improved upon, it's just going to be a cause of frustration for both halves. Because if you have a very slapdash Q&A, which can't be any more in-depth because it's so time-consuming because you have 58 bloody questions to answer, then, you know, people at GG aren't going to sink even more time into it, meaning you're not going to get a successful Q&A with helpful answers. Meaning the community will get annoyed and frustrated. So you make the Q&A, the community rages at you, and then you're like, yo, I didn't have to do a Q&A. I just spent all of my time writing up these answers, and you've just basically told me to piss off. Well, I'm annoyed, and then the community is annoyed, and the devs are annoyed. So yeah, let's improve how we do Q&As. Let's do more developer interviews, if you ever need someone to interview, by the way. More than happy to. And uh, yeah, that's my massive takeaway from all of this. Now, if you're wondering where I've been just in general, uh, side news, I've been playing a lot of Risk of Rain 2 and Last Epoch. Really amazing games. I'm going to be doing dedicated videos for them um, on my YouTube channel. I'm not sponsored by either of them, um, just for the record. And yeah, I've been having loads of fun. So expect some Risk of Rain stuff and some Last Epoch stuff. Um, I will probably make a series of YouTube videos leading into the flashback for people who want builds for flashback. I'm still not entirely sure whether I'm actually going to play flashback though. So... Hmm. I'm in a bit of an awkward limbo until 3.7. I've done most of what I would like to do. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, I'm Taki. Here's some feedback that might be helpful for someone. Have a good day. Bye-bye.